this when he says, first of all, there has to come a falling away first. And then he says in verse 4, it's already here. He's already setting himself up in the temple of God, which temple ye are. And the only reason Paul was writing any of these letters to these churches because of all the spiritual problems they were having in the church. He's saying when he says, he oppo who opposeth. Opposeth, if I say this guy opposeth me, that don't mean he's going to oppose me in the future. It means he's doing it right now. So what he's saying, two things have to happen. The falling away, the apostasis has to happen. That's the word falling away. Apo and stasis, a removal of stasis or standing upright. From stasis we get staros. There has to be removal of the cross, and that's the daily cross, not the wooden cross. How do you get a daily cross? You tell the truth. And the daily cross has been removed from the lives of the believers in America. I don't even hear anybody. I try to go out in public and find somebody to talk to. I can't find anybody to talk to. Very seldom. I'll bring up, I'll bring up the subject of God or something, even in a light manner, trying to get somebody to comment. I can't get a word out of people. They're all walking around dead down at the grocery store. A bunch of dead people. They might as well be corpses walking around. They are, aren't they? Then he says, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? I told you the church was apostate when I came to Thessalonica and I visited with you. And now you know what withholdeth that the man of sin or he might be revealed in his time. Now you know what withholdeth. The word withholdeth is the word kateko, K-A-T-E-C-H-O. It comes from echo and kata. Kata has a variation of meanings. It means down or with intensity. Well, in this case, it means down because this word Echo means to hold. We think of an echo as holding a sound. Hello, 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 hello. Go out to some canyon and holler that and it'll, it'll echo. Echo means to hold. Paul is saying, now you know what's holding the church down. Notice what he says. Two things have to happen. The falling away, the removal of a daily cross in the church. And he says that's already happening in verse 4. Doesn't he? He says, he, Satan, he said, the man of sin is already sitting in the temple of God. He's already set himself up in the temple. And he's already causing the church to apostatize, showing himself that he is God. He says, now you know what's holding the church down. Well, what does he mean by that? What he says in the previous verse, the following way is already here. There's only one thing left to happen in order for the church to go out to meet the Lord in the air and to be gathered together unto him as verse 1 says. Now you know what holds the church down. Isn't that what this is about? The gathering together unto him, the episunagoge in verse 1, is our gathering, being gathered together with him to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now you know what's holding the church down. One thing is left. The apostasy's already started. When I'm writing this letter, there's one thing that has to be brought, has to be brought about, and that is the man of sin has to be revealed. The two things have to happen. And he goes on to say, for look at verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity is already working in the church. The apostasy's already here while I'm writing this letter. Only he who now letteth will let. The word letteth is the same word, kateko. Only he who holds the church down will hold the church down until the man of sin be taken out of the way. So until the man of sin is revealed, Christ is not coming back. 
And what's going to reveal the man of sin is Christ being revealed in clouds of heaven. Now you know what holds down until the man of sin is taken out of the way. What's holding the church down and what's keeping the church being gathered together unto the Lord in verse 1 and going out to meet the Lord in 7 and 8 before he destroys everything in this world is the man of sin has to be revealed. He has to be exposed and that comes at the end of time. The next verse. And then... After all this comes about, the apostasy is worked its full work. The mystery of iniquity is already working in the church. As of the writing of this letter, Paul says, And then shall that wicked be revealed. Apocalypto. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. What's he mean, the spirit of his mouth? Out of his mouth goes a sharp Two-edged sword. He's going to consume the man of sin with a sharp sword out of his mouth. That's what he's talking about. And shall destroy the man of sin with the brightness of his coming. With the epiphania, E-P-I-P-H-A-N-E-I-A, epiphania. We get our word epiphany. We think of the epiphany of Christ. He had the first epiphany when he came in the manger. And the next time he's not going to be some little baby that you can push around. He's coming back with an epiphany of his coming. The brightness. He's going to epiphanos. P-H-A-I-N-O-S. Phanos means to shine. It means to superimpose a shining. Well, that's the brightness of his coming, isn't it? That's the, as the lightning shines from the east to the west. That's in flaming fire, isn't it? You know, this is a scary thing, isn't it? This is frightening to know that Jesus is coming back, not as some gentle Jesus, meek and lowly. He's coming back in a rage with a sword coming out of his mouth. I've got a picture on a t-shirt like that. I've got a picture on to bring up here and frame and put up here that's got him coming back with that sword coming out of his mouth. He looks like some fierce general. He's not going to be the little sissy Jesus that everybody's ashamed of. The one that I was ashamed to talk about when I was a kid because I didn't know that wasn't the real Jesus. Even him who's coming... He's going to destroy the man of sin whose who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They did not receive the agape, but God has to write that on a man's heart. And if you're not one of the predestinated elect of God, you don't have it. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. God doesn't want them. They don't belong to him. And these are the people that are going to be destroyed with Satan when he comes back and casts them all in the lake of fire. And that's going to be the majority of mankind because few will enter the narrow gate and many will go in the broad way. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And then he says to the saints here, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. He hasn't chosen everyone. Those that are damned because they receive not the love of the truth, they're going to perish at the coming of the Lord. And Satan's going to be revealed and he's going to be destroyed And the man of sin is going to be destroyed with the brightness of his coming. I don't want to miss that. I want to be on on the Lord's side when that happens. Through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, wherefore he called you to our gospel, to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, 
comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. This is a comforting word, isn't it? That we got something to look forward to. Do I have any time, Mike? Six minutes. Me. I got... Yeah, it does. Yes, I hate dispensationalism. 